Hello! If you are here from the last video in the calendar's playlist, you may remember how we ended it on notes about the Epi-Olmec civilization from the southern Gulf of Mexico. Their stone sculptures had long count dates from the middle of the 2nd century AD. 200 years later, the Maya of southeast Mexico and northern Central America would start using the calendars in their art. And once they did, they were putting it on everything. Jewelry. Ceramics. Stone. Buildings. Wood. And their so-called books or codices. For the next 600 years, recording dates became so important to the Maya that archaeologists even use it as one of the cutoffs for the Classic period. This is to say, shortly after the year 900, the Maya stopped carving long count dates on their buildings and monuments, one of several major culture changes that happened during the shift to the post-Classic period. This episode in the Calendars of Ancient Mexico playlist will explore how the Maya braided three distinct calendar counting systems in their art and philosophy, with works from the Classic period. They will include pieces including all three calendars in the same text, to show how the ancient Maya fitted them to unique points in time. Before stepping too far ahead into the mythical calendar, I should point out that ancient Mesoamerican cultures were aware of the 365-day solar year. It was one of the three counting systems the Maya used most. The Hab had 18 months, each with an identifying glyph, then a leftover five days called Wayeb. This produces the familiar 365-day count. The Tzolkin was an important system with mythical aspects, and I will talk about it later in this episode. For now, notice that its 260-day count is also a product of 20. Most celebrated of all, from past to present, is the long count, which uses counts of 20 to produce larger and larger units of time. Notice how all three rely on units of 20. 20 is the base of the vigesimal counting systems used in native Mesoamerican languages. A quick puzzle. In many Mayan languages, the word for 20 was the same for human. Why? What do most humans have 20 of? If you answered fingers and toes, you are correct. Because of how central the long count is in Maya concepts of time, I will now turn to unpacking how it worked. Stella 26 of Huaxactun from North Guatemala is an excellently intact example of how the Maya could write all three calendars together into a single text. It follows a standard pattern of long count, then the 260-day Tzolkin sign, and finally the numeric position in the month for the solar year. You may remember from the previous video that Mesoamerican scribes wrote glyphs in combinations of top-down and left-right directions, so that is the order we will take. The first figure to notice is the large oval, highlighted at top. This is a Tun glyph, saying, start reading the long count date from here. The first glyph in this long count sequence marks the unit of time called the Bak Tun, the longest of the first five digits. It measured a count of 144,000 days. Notice the four dots in vertical bar to its left. The bar stands for five, and each dot represents one. One bar and four dots makes nine, so this glyph tells us to multiply 144,000 times nine for the first digit. The second glyph marks the katun, the unit of 7,200 days. It is a little less than two decades, and the Maya often timed political milestones to its turning. Notice the lobe symbol on the left. This is a sign for zero, and the Maya were in fact the first culture in the New World to invent the mathematical concept. Next comes the tun, the 360-day count. To its left are two bars of five each, showing that this unit is being counted 10 times. 360 is a product of 18 times 20, the 20 days of the Huinal. This date counts zero Huinal. And the most basic unit of the long count is the individual day, or Qin, after the word for sun, also zero here. Every instance of the long count date used at least these first five digits. Next is the Tzolkin date, the number in sign from the 260-day mythical calendar, seven Ahau, or Lord. Finally, the register in the solar year, the fourth day in the month of Yash, 
for the Maya started counting a month's days from zero. Zero, one, two, three, the fourth day. Archaeologists write out the full long count by the five digits. Nine, zero, ten, zero, zero. Here's how they add up. Nine times 144,000, the length of the Paktun, produces 1,296,000 days. Zero Katun counts zero days. 10 times 360 days per tun yields 3,600 days. Zero Winal, zero days. Zero Kin, zero days. This many days had passed since the long counts commenced. What was the long count starting from? The beginning of the current cosmic age, August 11th, 3114 BC, whose long count date was 130000. Adding the non-zero numbers brings, since that mythical moment, a total of 1,299,600 days, October 16th, 445 AD. The Tzolkin and month glyphs also match these exact dates. These are the principles that guide the most famous artifact of Maya culture, the 2012 event. From the Gulf Coast state of Tabasco, the site of Tortuguero left the only known glyphic text describing any event for the 2012 milestone. It concerns the turning of the 13th Baktun on December 21, 2012. The long count date returned to 130000, the same date I mentioned earlier for the beginning of the current age. The Maya never said the calendar or the world would end in 2012. It just marked the end of the 13th Baktun cycle since 3114 BC. In fact, some Maya dates had even larger units. They extend the long count by multiples of 20, which we saw for the smaller cycles. 20 Baktun formed a unit of 2,880,000 days that archaeologists call Peak Tun. Following this pattern, the Kalab Tun had 57,600,000 days. Multiplying times 20 again yielded the Kinchil Tun with 1,152,000,000 days. And the last of these massive periods was the Alau Tun, whose 23 billion, 40 million days ran over 63 million years, which in geological time marked the end of the dinosaurs. These four mega units are very rare in Maya timekeeping, and they are not the original names, but rather coined by archaeologists. This detail from the Tortuguero text predicts the 2012 date. The first glyph I've highlighted has three dots and two bars. What is 2 times 5 plus 3? 13 is correct. This passage tells of the turning of the 13th Baktun on the date of Forahau, 3, and Kim. Remember that we start from zero for months, so this is the fourth day. While the rest of this section is broken and worn, it mentions a Maya god related to the night cycles. And that is all the ancient Maya ever said about December 21st, 2012. They clearly weren't expecting us to go anywhere. In the previous video, I discussed how planetary observations inspired the mythical calendar's 260 days. 260 is a product of two cycles, a numeric count from 1 to 13, running with 20 days, each identified with a unique glyph and following a precise order. The same sign would always appear 20 days later, and the Maya used this rule to plan for astronomical, ritual, and political events. Tzolkin means order of days, in reference to its fixed cycle. The oldest uses for the Tzolkin were three. One, to link dates in the solar year to those of mythical cycles. Two, to name each solar year by the number and sign of its first day. And three, to identify long count units of time by the number attached to the last day. Remember that the long count is built of multiples of 20, so its cycles would always end on the same sign, a how or lord. The numbers would cycle through regularly. One possible analogy might be something like, instead of saying the 2020s, we would call it, quote, the decade ending when December 31st is a Tuesday, unquote. Each sign had its own spiritual qualities. Each number had its own spiritual qualities. How did the ancient Maya list these qualities? The texts actually say very little about what the individual signs and numbers meant. We know much more about them from sources after the conquest, from colonial documents to modern rituals. 
I will address ritual aspects of the 260-day calendar in later episodes in this playlist. To begin looking at mystical aspects of the 260-day calendar, the next episode will turn us to the other Mesoamerican civilization famous for using it. I will see you again to start looking at how the Aztecs brought mythology into their calendars.